Bordeaux makes some of the most prestigious wines in the world, with prices to match its reputation. A new release from Chateau Sonne will set you back about 1200 a bottle, and Petrus is about three grand. One of the reasons that top-name Bordeaux are so pricey is demand from collectors. Another reason is that the wines can be amazingly wonderful. But the reality is that most of us are not going to shell out a month's rent for a bottle of wine. Here to guide us towards some bargain Bordeaux is James Molesworth, Wine Spectator's lead taster for the region and our go-to authority. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for having me down. You have just finished a massive tasting of Bordeaux. How many wines did you try? Well, I was there uh, to taste the 2010 vintage in barrel, so that was almost 500 samples. You tasted some expensive wines and some value wines. What is the difference for you between them? What's a value wine? Well, value is obviously relative. If you're a wine from Chile, for instance, your value point is probably 10 or $15. Bordeaux is a little bit different because it is a higher priced region. Generally, I look for a 30 or under. And you've got two wines here that are sort of in the $30 range. Correct, and they're from the Bordeaux and Bordeaux Superior Appalachians instead of the big name Pauillac or Pomerol Appalachians. But you can get some really great wine from there. So you're really looking at a lesser known Appalachian for these values. You have to get out into the hinterlands, so to speak, of Bordeaux to find the values. This terroir might not be as prestigious as some of the big name Appalachians, and in difficult years it can be a little less forgiving but with serious producers, they can make some great wine year in and year out. So who are these two producers? Well, the first producer we have is Chateau Jean Faux, which is owned by a gentleman named Pascal Collot. And then the second wine is called the Mauvais Garçon, or Bad Boy, which is owned by Jean-Luc Tunevin of Chateau Valandreau fame. Okay, let's give them a try. So what do you expect? This is the This Jean is the Faux? Chateau Jean Faux, Bordeaux Superior, 2008. What are you looking for in this wine? Well, I'm looking for varietal characteristics. It's predominantly Merlot with uh, about 20% Cabernet Franc. And so you should be getting a, a softer, more accessible texture. Uh, but you should still be getting nice dense fruit, black currant, berry, a little bit of tobacco, and a nice minerality too. These aren't huge wines. They're not the ozones and petruses of the Bordeaux wine world. But they do have stuffing. They will age nicely for two, three, four years. And they give you a little accessibility now, which the bigger names won't do. This is 2008. Correct. So two years down the road, they're just happy to drink. It's accessible now and should be drinkable for the next three to five years. How would you describe the tannins in this wine? There are tannins, but they're not huge tannins. They're nicely integrated. They're a little more supple. And while they would do well with food, it's also a wine that could be drunk on its own. Second wine here from... Jean-Luc Tunevin. The Mauvais Garçon. It's got a nice catchy label. Uh, he's the black sheep of Saint-Emilion. Kind of does things his own way. And so hence said, the uh, yeah. Mauvais Garçon, the bad boy. The bad boy. Now what uh, you get here is sort of an expertise in terroir because Jean-Luc Tunevin has been in Saint-Emilion for a number of years. So he sees uh, parcels that are sometimes undervalued both in Saint-Emilion and then just outside in Côte de Castillon or other Appalachians. He blends those together, so that's why it has the generic Bordeaux AOC appellation. Um, but what you get is someone making a serious wine. He also makes Chateau Valandreau, which costs uh, about $230 a bottle. Yeah, and the 2008 vintage uh, Valandreau, which is the original garage wine, uh, is a three-digit price tag wine. And here you have something that's around $30, because what you have is a uh, higher production terroirs that are, uh, uh, again, outside of the Saint-Emilion, so they're classified, uh, you know, generally lower in the classification system. And you get a wine that's meant to be approachable now, but again, can age for two, three, four years. What would you expect in a $30 wine versus a $220 wine? Well, price, of course, is determined by supply and demand, as well as prestige and history. So a $200 wine isn't necessarily 10 times better than a $20 wine, but you're going to get more depth of fruit more minerality, more ageability from the wines that generally are higher up on the scale. The Mauvais Garçon, again, more approachable now, can age a little bit. Not a wine you'd put away for 10 years, though. This is a wine to be drunk. The tannins are quite different on this wine. Different. They're a little more focused right down the middle, whereas the Jean Faux I, I find more supple and around the edges, whereas the Mauvais Garçon is a very kind of direct beam of fruit and tannin. You can even see in the color what the the different proportion of Cabernet Franc does to the wine. The Jean Four with 20% Cabernet Franc has a little more of a mold spice, tobacco color, and yet the Mauvais Garçon, which is almost all Merlot, very bright, clear plum and cherry color right down the middle. What does the Cabernet Franc give to the wine? It does give it a little more structure, 
uh, gives it that tobacco note. Um, more black fruit to a black currant, especially when it's ripe. Whereas Merlot is, I consider more in the red fruit spectrum, plum, cherry. They're really beautiful, and you know, at around thirty dollars. Again, a wine you buy by the case, and then you don't have to rush to drink it. Perfect. Thanks for coming by, James, and sharing these Bordeaux bargains. Thanks for having me.